Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. As you now know, my name is Bo. I hope you guys are ready for another hopefully super fantastic mead. Something I want to explain about myself is I don't name my meads after like traditional things, you know, Hydromel, Capsicamel, Methaglin. I'm a giant fan of you know, D&D, dragons, mythological things, all that kind of stuff. So I like to name my meads after stuff like that, as in the Witch's Brew Mead. If you didn't catch that one, definitely go back and watch it. It is a fantastic mead and I hope you make it. Along with the names that I name my meads, I like to take the symbolisms of you know, that creature or whatever, and use those ingredients, things that symbolize those creatures. So today we are going to do a Phoenix blood mead. Right off the bat, everything has been sanitized. I've got a giant blue bucket here. First, let's get our honey going. So we're gonna start off with three pounds of wildflower honey. So what do we know about the Phoenix? Um, well, legends say that, you know, it's te tears can heal any wound. You know, it is a giant fiery bird. One thing is for sure is that the phoenix is immortal. It will, as it gets older, it eventually erupts in a giant ball of flames, comes crashing down, turns to ash, and from those ashes, a new phoenix is reborn. We have the honey symbolizing the healing of its tears. Something that symbolizes immortality would be cherry. And obviously the phoenix is a giant fire bird. So guess what? We're gonna be adding some heat to this in the form of jalapenos. We're gonna have three pounds of honey. I used wildflower. We're gonna use four pounds, four ounces of dark sweet cherries basically one bag and I just figured money will use the whole bit. We're also going to add two full jalapenos as well as our nutrient schedule. Uh, Fermito, Fermite K, and Cassian Carbon as well as EC 11 yeast. So now we have our honey measured. We're just going to add some water to this now. I used lukewarm water because that'll help the yeast kind of get, get going right away. But let's stir this up just to mix in that honey. Again, we want to mix lots to incorporate a lot of air into here because oxygen will help that yeast really get, get started. Eventually, I will buy one of those fancy mixers. Okay, we're gonna set that to the side and Let's get our cherries all chopped up. Cutting board. My choppy choppy. And cherries. Got my bowl and I've got a little bag. The whole reason I use these bags is it just makes it so much easier when you have to remove the fruit afterwards as well as why I do it in a bucket. Because then once fermentation's done and the cherries have done their job, I can just go ahead and pull the butt, pull the bag out, squeeze out all the juice, and throw it out. I'm just giving these a little bit of rough chop. All right, that's the last little bit. Got everything chopped up, and there is quite a fair amount of juice left in the bag. I'm just gonna pour that right into our bucket because that's just gonna add flavor and sugars. I know I called this phoenix blood, but my goodness, it looks like I seriously massacred a phoenix. I am going to just clean this up real quick and then we'll get on with our regularly scheduled program. Okay, so the massacre has been cleaned up and now we're gonna add our fire, the jalapenos. So we're gonna grab a clean, newly sanitized cutting board and our knife. And we're gonna use two jalapenos. So I'm gonna start off, just cut off the tops. What the heck? Who's calling me? Hello? Bo. Yeah? Hey man. Hey man, how's it going? I just wanted to, to 
Oh no, it's fine. I'm just I'm just making tea, dude. I just wanted to let you know that uh, like whenever you switch your camera angles and stuff, make sure you keep on looking at the camera. Oh. You know, just. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, just just keep on looking at the camera, like whenever you switch all your yeah, angles and stuff. Yeah, I've been doing man. that the whole time. That's just common sense. All uh, right, yeah. Thanks a lot, brother. Right, bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right, so we're just gonna cut these in half, in half again, and we're just gonna cut them into chunks. Nice and simple. We're gonna add it to our bag, and there we go. We're just gonna tie this up. So you may have noticed that when I was cutting up the jalapenos and putting it in the bag, I included the seeds and everything. I did that on purpose, because uh, that's where the heat is in the jalapenos. But well, now we're gonna add our nutrients. We're gonna do one teaspoon of Fermato, half a teaspoon of Fermate K, and about a third a teaspoon of potassium carbonate. That done, we're gonna give it a mix. And we're gonna take a gravity reading now. So it's sitting at about 1.082 right now. I want it a little bit higher. I'm gonna go at least get it to 1.100. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more honey. Okay, so we're sitting at 1.100, which should bring us to about 13%, which is good enough for me. I ended up adding another full pound of honey. That's basically due to the juice from, from all the cherries and stuff. It just diluted everything that much. So now we're gonna pitch our yeast. Again, I'm using EC1118. This time, I'm gonna pitch the whole pack. I'm gonna pour that in there. And now I'm just gonna stir like crazy for a while, just to get this all incorporated, get some air incorporated, because I don't have a fancy paddle yet. Okay, so that's all mixed now. Now all we gotta do is add our cherries and jalapenos. A little bit more juice there. Slap our lid on. and install our airlock. And there you have it, Phoenix Blood Mead. I should note, I have made this before, about a year ago, and even after a year, it is spicy as hell. I wonder what I could do to kind of tone that heat down a little bit, and maybe add a little more depth to this. Hmm, come on, we've got a help though. Don't let me down. Oh, theobromine, that might be the answer. I'm talking about cocoa nibs. They actually represent a rebirth and immortality because the god of maize of Mayan and Aztec lore managed to get himself into a spot of trouble. He got himself killed and ended up in the underworld where he had to reincarnate himself as a cocoa tree. He then proceeded to find himself the goddess of fertility who bore him two sons, twins, and those sons essentially uh, broke daddy out of jail by uh, killing all the evil gods and placing him back on earth and in the heavens. So what do you think? Would that be the answer to combating your fiery dragon? Maybe it's worth a try. I got it. You know what? In secondary, uh, once I transfer it into a glass carboy, I'm gonna add some cacao nibs. I bet you that would be fantastic because the, you know, that chocolate flavor will really mix well with the heat and the cherries and maybe tone it down just that little bit that's needed just to bring it to the top. Now, I want to see how this turns out with the cocoa nib suggestion. So try that first. But what I would do is I would cut the jalapenos and I would take all these seeds out, the hot part of them, and I would save those, put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer or whatever. I wouldn't add those to primary. I would add those in a bag in secondary for a day, I'd taste it, another day, I'd taste it, another day, I'd taste it, 
and when it hits that perfect level of hotness that I want, I take it out. From what I've been told, it only takes a matter of days for hotness from peppers to impart themselves into the meat. So there you go, our Phoenix Blood meat is done, and now we just will keep you updated on how things go, how it progresses. If you enjoyed this video, definitely like and subscribe, and turn on that little bell icon. We're releasing two videos a week, Saturdays and Thursdays. Don't miss out. Lots of exciting content coming, so definitely follow. I also want to note, I do one gallon batches for the most part, um, mainly because a lot of my stuff is experimental. Obviously, uh, using things like intentions or symbolisms to make a mead, you're going to get some really weird combinations. So I just do one gallon batches. I do do a few large batches. If you're interested in me maybe filming one of those, let me know in, down in the comments and I can definitely do that for sure. But for the experimental stuff, I'm gonna stick to the one gallons. I like to mix it up and I like to tweak things before I expand it. But if you would like help in expanding any of these to five gallon batches, join our Discord and just ask. We are very interactive on there and we'd love to see you there. Thanks again, happy brewing and cheers.